right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with maths of functions. And the first one, as you can see, actually, in the form math functions, there's quite a lot of to go through. Um, some of them is quite uh, quite straightforward, and some of them needs a bit of a uh, discussion about and looking into a bit deeper how it works. They're all function blocks, so as, as a functions itself, so uh, it should be quite straightforward adding just a data into it and uh, getting results out. So first one we're going to have a look at, it. it is a, a calculate. A calculate is literally a calculator. As you can see in here, there's a little calculator in there. By clicking on it, you can see in here that you need to uh, write up your own uh, formula. Right in here on the bottom, you can see possible instructions. There's quite a lot. Basically, most most mathematical instructions that you would need, they can pretty much cover it. But for, for us, what we're going to do, we are going to create a basic formula. And here, what we're going to do is uh, go into a bracket. And we're going to go in one space. Always do the spaces when you do the pluses at that times or whatever. So always do the space. So let's go plus space in input two uh, in brackets and then we can do space and then we could create like minus and input a uh, three. So and, and press enter as you can see, it says we don't have data type because we haven't selected it yet, but that's fine. So I'll click OK. And so that formula now is what you just written is going to be in there. So to uh, add another input, so just just click a little star in here, we'll add another one. From here, as you can see, question marks. Now you can select what kind of data you're going to be dealing with. As you can see, it's quite a bit. Choose whichever data you want to work with and select. So we're going to be working with basic integers. So in here, I'm going to say it's going to be a uh, 10 in here, 20 in here, and uh, 30 in here. I don't know why I put down a 10 in there, but let's change that one to 20 in here. So this data can be edited just like like you see, and I just did. Or that data can come pretty much from anywhere. So that will be entirely up to you. That could be coming from any integer you are collecting anywhere in the program, and you can just send it right in there for our calculations. I have added a uh, input in here just to execute every time I want to calculate. This can be always on if you wish to, but uh, for me, I'm just going to do the calculations as input is activated. When for that a result needs to go somewhere, file in here, which is you call int, so calculated int, so. We're going to put, put that in here. So now that the block is uh, ready to go, let's put compile it and check it out. And there we go. So as you can see, minus 15. There we go. So and just, just, just basically runs like a normal calculator. So you can do many different things. The next up we can see in here, and uh, let's leave that. The next thing you can see in here, which is add, subtract, multiply, and divide. These are literally, let's just check out the divide. It's just, uh, this one is already pre-done. Rather than you writing the formula up in here, you just have this divide straight specifically for divisions. So uh, this is kind of self-explanatory. We can skip those. The next one we're going to jump on is a return reminder of a division. So this one's an interesting block. Let's check that out. So again, another mathem mathematical equation. So what it does in here, it will divide input one by with input two and output of the, re the reminder. So we'll say it's going to be again, it's going to be our uh, integer in here. They're going to put the value as a 12, uh, 12 in here and 10 in here. And output is going to go into our, our uh, call in, in here. So let's compile, check out how that would work. And here we go. By activating a block, as you can see, the output is a 2. That's a reminder of a 12 divided by 10. Reminder is equal to 2. So here we go. If you ever need to use that kind of formula, you can use that. All right, and the next one we're going to have a look at it is create twas complement, which is a, is it called twas or whatever that is. All it does is changes the signs. So let's put that in and have a look at it. If this input is, let's say, minus 10, and we're going to tell him it's an integer. So the output will be outputted as plus 10 if you ever need to. And we need something like that to happen. So pretty cool function. And as you go, as you see, uh, minus 10 goes in, and as soon as that block gets activated, my plus 10 goes out. Quite straightforward. Invert the sign. 
All right, the next one we're going to be checking out is increment. Increment is not really specifically very well explained into a manual itself, but I'll show you what it does. So increment is a, the increment is as soon as it receives the signal, it will go up by one. But by one, as far as I understand, it's every time there is a full cycle that we count as one. So let's see how that would work. So we need to give him some form of global memory. So for that, let's give him a uh, integer value in here because only can do integers in different formats. Let's compile and see how that will work. And here we go. I'm going to be using a block F triggers, which is going to be a triggering a, a signal to go up by one as soon as it uses it detects a negative edge. So by clicking a button, as you can see, it's gone up by one. So every time. If that happens it goes up by one you can use it like that or many different ways and same goes as well for a decrement so let's change that there we go let's update the block and as you can see the value now starts at 11 and as soon as I activate the signal it will start going down every cycle and every time it sees the negative edge and there we go that's increment and decrement all right, the next one we're going to be checking out is ABS, which is a form absolute value. Let's see how that guy works. All this guys do is make sure, make sure that the output is always absolute value, which is positive. So let's say this time we'll take a real number. Why not? And let's say the incoming uh, numbers are coming in, in minus, which is rather 12 point something five, something like that. It doesn't really matter. And an output we're going to put in our uh, call reel in here. And let's load in, see how that would work. And as you can see in here, the minus 12.5 going in and it will change that to plus 12.5. All it does is make sure that it comes out as a positive value. So even though if the positive, so like its predecessor down there, the negative, we was able to change from sign to sign. This one just makes sure that there is only a positive value coming out. And there we go, as you can see now that the 12.5 goes in, but it still outputs 12.5. So only positive is allowed to go through. And that is a BS. Next up, let's uh, check out uh, the get minimum. The get minimum is very useful block if you want to find if you have many different data coming in, but you want to know what is the minimum, what has been the minimum value out of all these values. As you can see in here, I have created a many different inputs in here. Again, these could be coming from anywhere. So I have all different things, but as you can see, my minimum is one. So the output will be outputting one. Very, very good if you are looking to acquire your minimum value from many different data. See, back to the last, so it's going to be outputting what is the minimum number. If I would change that one to, let's say, 111. And as you can see now, my, my minimum, minimum is 6. And pretty much the same applies to maximum. There you go, let's update the block. And there you go, now as, a, as a, the block gets activated or is active, it will always be outputting the maximum value, which in my case is 125. Pretty cool block if you want to acquire minimum and maximum values. All right, the next one we're gonna be checking out is limit. We just set a limit values. Really, really cool block. Let's have a look how that would work. So this guy in here just regulates to make sure the minimum and maximum values it is met and if it is going below or above it gets ignored. So an output will be ignored if it is going below or above. So let's have a look how that would work. So let's say this one is 10 and this one is a uh, 20. And we say let's say roughly our input is coming in now at 15. Okay, and let's say those values are integers. Okay, let's move that in here. Oop, here we go. Let's load it in. And as you can see in here, if I click the button, the, the value outgoing value is 15 as my input. So because it is within a, uh, a 10 and 20, which is our, which is my limit. And let's see what happens if you go below. And in this case, what it's going to do, because it is now a below 10, all it's going to be the outputting at the minimum value, which is 10. As you can see, it's gone below minimum value, so the minimum value is 10, and it will be outputting 10, it will not let go any lower than that. So, and if it goes above, it will not let the 21 go through. The maximum is 20, so the 20 will be only let through. As you can see, here we go. Very cool block to regulate your limits when it, for incoming values. 
And all the rest, guys, is all literally a complex mathematical equations. So those are pretty much like we would remember from the school. So edit the input and it will change it to whatever you're looking for. It is not worth going through it because they are so more or less are self-explanatory. So it's 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 all mathematics in here if I ever need to do. And that will pretty much will cover all the math functions. There's some cool stuff in here that you can check out. But hopefully by now you already get the gist of how the math functions work.